I am a Magoo superhero here to teach you about problem solving on the GMAT. Woo! <laughs> um, hi, it's Tuesday and I'm Kevin and we're back in GMAT Tuesdays. Uh, today, like I said, we're working on problem solving and specifically talking about how figures are drawn as accurately as possible. So this is an important concept to just internalize so that when you're dealing with math problems, or excuse me, problem solving questions on the GMAT, you know what you can and can't assume about the figures that are drawn there. So um, on the test, they actually put this phrase here, I'm putting it here now so you don't have to uh, read it, but internalize it. So a figure, so that means shapes, drawings, geometric figures, those sorts of things, um, that accompany a problem solving question is intended to provide, to provide information useful. Look at that, they're providing useful information. Who would think that they would do that? In solving problems, this, there should be an S there. <laughs> we'll do grammar correction as we go. Uh, figures are drawn as accurately as possible. So that's the key phrase. They are doing the best job they can to draw figures as accurately as possible, which is great. That means we can use the information in the figure itself to help solve the problem. Um, there is one except, of course, there's always going to be an exception. Sometimes it will say in the question itself, the figure is not drawn accurately or not drawn to scale. Um, in those scenarios, you have to ignore all this. But in general, unless you see that uh, written on the question, then you can safely assume that there's useful information that you can draw from the questions on the test, or excuse me, the figures on the test. So here I have on this slide two good assumptions that you can make. Um, so for example, with this figure here, or excuse me, with this line, um, you can see that there's a dot here, a dot here, and then the line goes through right there. And then there's a dot there and the line goes through right there. So we could safely assume that the line is crossing the y-axis at two and the x-axis at three. So maybe it's not exactly three and maybe it's not exactly two, but that's a great starting point. Start with those easy numbers, three and two. Um, it looks like it's the same distance from here to here as it is from here to here. So I'm safely assuming it's one increment and the same here. The distance from here to here looks the same from here to here. So that's information we can use to help solve the problem. Um, also, if you're told you have a rectangle and they've given you a shape that looks like this, there's things that you can safely assume about this rectangle. For one, they've labeled this side as length five. We know that this length is longer. It visually looks longer. So I can assume that this length and this length are going to be bigger than five. Also, if it's a rectangle, I know I have all right angles. If I know that, then this triangle that's formed here, I now know is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. 30 here, 90 here, 60 there. Okay, so those are safe assumptions to make. If you're provided a figure, you're told it's a rectangle, there's certain facts that you can assume based on the figure itself and your knowledge of rectangles. Now, bad assumptions. Say that you're given two lines. You just have two lines. And you're not told anything about them. You're just told that you have two lines. You can't assume that they're parallel. It looks like they're parallel, but they might not actually be parallel. So, um, for example, if this problem were to give you another line, let me draw it in red. Woo, ah. If you were to draw another line here, we can't use our knowledge of parallel lines crossing another line to help solve the problem. We would need to have uh, those ticks telling us, oh, these are parallel. Another thing, if you're given a figure that looks like this and you're not provided any information about it, 
you can't assume it is a square. Maybe it looks like it's a 90 degree angle there, 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 and there. Maybe the sides look equal, but this could be a case where it's actually a rhombus, where the angles are like 89.8 uh, degrees, and maybe one side is longer than the other. You can't just assume that this is a right angle if it isn't indicated on the figure. Um, so you would need in the problem for them to say it's a square or to tell you um, that one side is equal to another side. And then you can use that information. Okay, so there is useful information you can uh, derive from the figures on the test when doing problem solving questions. Just be careful about the assumptions that you make. There are bad assumptions and good assumptions to be made out there. Okay, uh, if you have any questions about this concept, please put comments down below. Um, if there's a video that you're hoping I will do, let me know. I can't read your mind, so you need to tell me, and I will, uh, I will record the video for you. Um, good luck studying for the GMAT, and be excellent to the universe.